open source 3D printed meals done directly in your home. Sounds like science fiction, doesn't it? But this company from Japan wants to make it a reality. I'm Zach, this is Zach DTV, and I think we need to take a look at this. Open Meals is the name of the company that brought their pixel food printer to South by Southwest. And this food printer sat there and spit out 8-bit food. And in one demonstration, they supposedly teleported food from Tokyo to Austin. They had a chef make sushi in Tokyo, and they sent that over the internet and had it printed out at this food printer. I mean, come on, that's pretty wild. Now, before you go on thinking like, yeah, okay, this isn't gonna happen. What you saw in that video was a culmination of years worth of work to make this system a reality. In fact, Open Meals has a four-part plan to bring this device into the world. And that starts with digital ODEN, or converting food into data. First, they start with a taste sensor that can detect the five basic tastes. Salty, sour, bitter, sweet, savory, and they say they can even make umami. And then the food item goes to the 3D scanner. This way they can come up with the most accurate visual profile they can for the item they are testing. They then do texture, density, moisture content, and MRI tests in order to get the consistency and the density of it right. And finally, they take nutrient measurements to make sure they can not only replicate the flavor, but also the nutritional benefits of any food that you print. The second step in their progress here was to set up what they're calling the food base. Basically, it is a database of meal after meal after meal after meal. I mean, they have digital information for things like shortcake or T-bone steaks, bananas, broccoli, apples, and of course, sushi. This database will then work with the Pixel Food Printer in order to deliver these meals to your plate or to an astronaut on the space station. And I'll tell you what, for a food printer, this is complex. I'm pretty amazed by it. Unlike a lot of the food printers that are out there right now that can only print in certain materials, they can only print in chocolate or a jam or a jelly or something to that effect, this company has decided to use gel. And in this printer, they have flavor cartridges, color cartridges, nutritional element cartridges, and a gelatinizing agent cartridge. That all runs down to the boiler slash stirrer unit. That is then pushed through to the minuscule cube fabricator. And finally, onto your plate with the robotic arm. And as you saw right now, the stuff they're printing is pretty blocky. I mean, really, it looks like something out of Minecraft or a Mario video game. I mean, heck, if you were to print duck, it'd probably look like something out of Duck Hunt. But just like our TVs and our screen pixels have gotten better and better and better, as this technology improves, the pixels will get smaller and smaller and smaller. And eventually, we're going to end up with high-definition printed gel food. Now, I keep mentioning this gel. And the reason they went with gel is because depending on the way you mix it is how dense it will be, how firm it can be, what kind of mouthfeel you'll get from it. They believe they can replicate nearly everything with this gel. By using a gel, they can also tailor the nutrients to people's dietary needs. Cut down on sugars for people who are diabetic. Maybe add some macronutrients for people who want more nutrients in their diet. And on their website, they even promote the idea of people tinkering and coming up with their own recipes, their own unique foods, and uploading them to the food base for other people to try. I mean, basically, when you're working with just a flavor profile, nutrient amounts, and a color texture, you could probably come up with some pretty wild things to print. I could imagine you'd probably come up with some pretty nasty things to eat too. But after all my time of looking at these different food printers and different food technologies, this is probably the closest we are going to be for a long time to that food replicator that we all saw on Star Trek. And like I said, this isn't just some little fly-by-night project either. This does have the backing of some major corporations in Japan, and they are going through a patent process on it right now, so they can bring it to market. So now, what do you think? Would you be willing to eat gel-based food? I mean, if they can get it to the point where it looks, tastes, has the same texture and density, nutritional content as a normal meal, personally, I'd be game. Let me know what you'd do in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to click that like button, 
and share it with your friends so they can learn about this cool new piece of tech. I am here Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, so I hope to see you here again soon. And until next time, have fun and be safe.